This teaching session shows the learner how to perform a detailed neurological examination. There is individual variation in how one may perform a neurological examination. Tailor your exam to the needs and the question at hand. A detailed and complete neurological examination can be performed in less than three minutes. Ensure that you have the necessary tools to perform an exam, including a visual acuity chart, a cotton applicator or a wooden tongue depressor, a tuning fork, and a tendon hammer. An ophthalmoscope is also recommended. A good neurological examination always starts with a detailed history. Ensure that you start the history at the very start of all symptoms. Query the patient for specific details, including left versus right, face versus arm versus leg, motor versus sensory versus autonomic, and negative versus positive symptoms. Focus particularly upon the tempo of progression, as this greatly narrows your differential diagnosis. Use your questioning to localize where in the neuroaxis a lesion lies. Most neurological examinations start with cranial nerve testing. Olfactory testing is often deferred. Optic nerve function is assessed in several ways. Through assessment of central visual acuity via the visual acuity chart by testing each eye with correction individually. Through assessment of peripheral visual fields via direct confrontation to each of the four visual quadrants of each eye. Through the pupillary light reflex, assessed direct and consensually. And through direct visualization of the optic disc via fundoscopy. Ocular motor, trochlear, and abducens nerve function is assessed via conjugate extraocular movements of both eyes by asking the patient to follow a target which moves in the direction of the letter H. Trigeminal nerve testing is assessed by light touch to three divisions. Masseter and temporalis bulk can be palpated. Facial nerve testing is assessed by asking the patient to mime facial movements in each of the five divisions by corrugating the frontalis muscle, eye closure and opening, showing teeth and lip pucker. The vestibular ocular nerve is screened by asking the patient to close their eyes and identify the sound of finger rub applied to either the right, left, or both ears. Glossopharyngeal nerve and vagus nerve function is assessed by the gag reflex. Touch each tonsillar pillar and look for a reflexive gag response. Glossopharyngeal nerve conveys the afferent limb and the vagus nerve conveys the efferent limb of the reflex. The spinal accessory nerve is tested through assessment of strength of shoulder shrug of the trapezius muscle and head turn of the sternocleidomastoid muscles. Bulk of each can also be palpated. Hypoglossal nerve testing can be assessed through tongue protrusion and visualization of muscle bulk. Cerebellar testing is assessed in the upper extremities by performing finger-to-nose testing of both the right and the left arms. And in the lower extremities by performing heel-to-shin testing of both the right and left legs. The general motor examination can be assessed while performing a root screen. C5 is assessed through deltoid muscle strength. C6 is assessed through brachioradialis muscle strength. C7 is assessed through triceps strength. C8 is assessed through palmaris longus strength. And T1 is assessed through thumb opposition. Ulnar nerve function is assessed through finger abduction strength. Radial nerve function is assessed through finger extension. Median nerve function is assessed through finger grip. Extremities can be assessed through a root screen also. L2 is assessed through hip flexion of the iliopsoas. L3 is assessed through thigh adduction of the sartorius. L4 is assessed through knee extension of the quadriceps femoris muscle. L5 is assessed through ankle dorsiflexion of the anterior tibialis muscle. S1 is assessed through plantar flexion of the gastrocnemius muscle. Each of these muscle groups can be palpated for muscle bulk. Muscle tone can be assessed 
through assessment of resistance to passive movement. Sensory testing should be tailored to the complaints of a patient. A general sensory examination should focus upon the distal aspect of the lower extremities, starting with the assessment of light touch. Hot and cold sensation can be assessed by asking the patient to identify hot versus cold when eyes are closed by using the cool metal of a tuning fork compared to the heat of a thumb. Alternatively, one can run the metal of a tuning fork from the distal foot up the proximal leg to assess for graded sensory loss of the lower extremities. Assessment of vibration by placing the vibrating tuning fork on the distal joint of the great toe, asking the patient to identify when the sensation of vibration extinguishes. Proprioception is assessed by parting digits 2, 3, 4, and 5 from the great toe. Hold the great toe on the lateral aspects to reduce the sensation of pressure on the dorsal and ventral aspects of the toe. The patient should, with eyes closed, identify whether the great toe is pointed up or down. Pinprick can be assessed by breaking a wooden applicator. Ask the patient to close their eyes and identify whether the stimulus applied to the distal foot and leg is sharp or dull. Use the sharpness of the broken applicator in comparison to the dull cotton tip of the swab. Gradually apply the stimulus more proximally up the leg until the patient can appropriately discriminate between the two. Deep tendon reflexes should be compared from right to left. Start with the C5 biceps brachii reflex by applying pressure to the tendon. With the firm strike of the hammer to the thumb, watch for contraction of the biceps brachii, which should flex the elbow. The C6 brachioradialis reflex is attained by teetering outstretched fingers on the distal third of the radial aspect of the forearm and applying a firm strike of the hammer to the fingers. Watch for contraction of the brachioradialis muscle, which should flex the elbow. The C7 triceps reflex is attained also by applying pressure to the triceps tendon over the elbow and applying a firm strike of the tendon hammer to the fingers. Assess for elbow extension. The L4 patella reflex is usually attained in the sitting position, whereby a firm strike of the hammer is applied to just distal and lateral to the inferior border of the patellar bone. Assess for knee extension via the quadriceps muscle. The S1 Achilles reflex is attained by passively dorsiflecting the ankle, applying a firm strike of the tendon hammer to the Achilles tendon, and assessing for plantar flexion via the gastrocnemius muscle. Note that all joints of the reflex being assessed must be flexed for adequate loading of muscle tension. Deep tendon reflexes cannot be accurately assessed if the appendage being assessed is in full extension. At this time, Babinski sign is assessed by applying a noxious stimulus to the lateral aspect of the plantar aspect of the foot, curving to the medial side as one approaches the ball of the foot. Assess the direction of the great toe. Great toe extension indicates the presence of Babinski sign. Finally, assess the patient's gait by asking the patient to walk away from the examiner with a normal stride. Assess for foot stride, asymmetry of movement, and adventitious movements. Ask the patient to walk on tiptoes, then on heels, and finally in tandem. Romberg sign is assessed at this time by asking the patient to stand with legs together, arms extended and eyes closed, assessing for step out. There are numerous neurological examination tests that can be performed to complement this basic exam. The exam presented in this video omits certain techniques such as muscle palpation and visualization, special sensation testing of cranial nerves 1, 5, and 7, etc. These tests should be added when a patient's symptoms or differential diagnosis suggests more detailed testing. Tailor the examination to the question at hand.